ഹലോ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഐ ആം വിജയൻ വലിയവലി ഓൾ ആർ വെൽക്കം ടു മൈ യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ ഇൻ ദി ഫസ്റ്റ് വീഡിയോ ഓഫ് ദിസ് സീരീസ് റിഗാർഡിംഗ് ദി ട്രെയിൻ ഓപ്പറേഷൻ ഇൻ ദി സെഷൻ വൺ വീഡിയോ ഐ ഹാവ് ടോൾഡ് യു വി വിൽ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് എ ട്രെയിൻ ഇൻ ദി നെക്സ്റ്റ് വീഡിയോ ഐ തിങ്ക് ഓൾ ആർ റെഡി ടു സി ഹാവ് എ ട്രെയിൻ ഇസ് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ഫ്രം ദി സ്റ്റേഷൻ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ദ ട്രെയിൻ ഇൻ ബ്രോഡ്ഗേജ് ഡബിൾ ലൈൻ സെക്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് ദ മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ട്രെയിൻ ഈസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി കൺട്രോൾഡ് ബൈ multiple aspect signaling system and the system in which the train is going to work is absolute block system and the loco or the engine we are having is in electric loco so before starting the train let us see what all these things are first let us see what is broad gauge you know the train is always running on a fixed track the track is made up of two rails connected by sleepers and this track is just placed on a bed of jelly or we will say ballast so it is a fixed path or we will say it is a permanent way it is the permanent way for the train here the two rails will not meet each other anywhere so it will go parallel the distance between the two rails will be always the same so in broad gauge the distance between these two rails will be 1.676 meters in indian railways most of our line is broad gauge previously years back we were having meter gauge lines in meter gauge the distance between the two rails will be as the name suggests 1 meter so now most of these meter gauge lines have been converted into broad gauge there are sections where we are running narrow gauge trains in narrow gauge the distance between the two rails will be less than 1 meter there are four types of narrow gauge now we are also having another gauge called standard gauge the proposed kerala in kerala which is going to run from one end of kerala to the other end the track is going to be standard gauge in standard gauge the distance between the two rails will be 1.435 meters okay let us come back to our train which is going to be run on broad gauge now coming to double line as the name suggests double line means two lines that is we will be having two tracks on one track we will be running trains only on a particular direction in the other line trains will be running always in the opposite direction so it is called double line here one line will be called up line and the other line will be called down line which one is up line which one is down line that will be notified in the working time table now coming to the system of working i told you that we are going to run the train in absolute block system what is this absolute block system in indian railways we are having two types of systems only that is one absolute block system and other automatic block system automatic block system is available in suburban section here one after another the trains will be moving in a short spell of time so that is the peculiarity of a uh, automatic block system we will go through it later on now we are waiting at a station for boarding the train in a station which is working under absolute block system let us see what happens when the train from the previous station is ready to come to our station the station master of that station will ask line clear from our station that is he is seeking permission for dispatching the train towards our station station master of the station after ensuring certain conditions he will give permission to the station master in ria to send his train towards our station that permission we will use to say granting line clear for the train this granting of line clear is 
achieved through electromechanical instruments which we are calling block instruments. When such a permission is given, such a line gear is granted, then the staff of the station will go and ring the bell. That means the section from that rear station to up to our station, the section, the entire section is blocked for this particular train. Then the staff is ringing the bell according to the direction of the train. A long bell followed by three bell, three short bell means the train is moving towards up direction. The long bell followed by two short bell means the train is moving towards down direction. As I told earlier, the up and down direction will be mentioned in the working timetable. So now we have granted line layer for the train from the rear station. Only after granting line layer, normally the station master of this rear station can clear the signal for this train. What is meant by this grinding line gear? We are ensuring the station master of this station who is grinding line gear is ensuring that there is no other train in the section, there is no other obstruction in the section, no shunting is there. The line is very clear, clean for this train to come. If there are any level crossing gates, these gates will be well informed. And also, if there are non-signal DLC gates, these gates will be closed, then only the station master will grant lying layer. So for your uh, preliminary knowledge, you understand this is the absolute block system. That is, the section between two block stations will be blocked for the particular train. Now, when the train has arrived at this station, the station master of this station will be asking lying layer from the next station, that is, from the station in advance. They will grant the line gear. The train will be started from here. In this way, the train moves on. Now we are going to start a train from, I told you, we are going to start a train. So the train will be worked on absolute block system. I told you that uh, our train is worked by an electric loco. For the electric loco, there should be an overhead line. The engine is, only the engine is getting the power from the overhead line. A line will be running in their length of this track and through the pantograph engine will be getting power and from that power engine is holding the entire train. So that is the electric loco. Now coming to the signaling system. I told you we are having multiple aspect color light signaling system. Then what is this multiple aspect color light signaling system controlling the movement of the trains? We will look into it. For that, first let us go to a road traffic signaling. In a road traffic junction, in a busy junction, there will be signals displaying various lights. Suppose when we are moving in a car, suppose red light is burning, that means it is danger, we must stop. So red is means stop, that is always everywhere it is like that. Red light means stop your vehicle. In railways also the same thing. Red means stop. In a single post there may be provision for red, yellow, green etc. But at a time it will be showing normally one light. The light shown by that signal is called the aspect of that signal. Suppose red is burning means it is showing we can say red aspect. So aspect means appearance of a signal. Aspect means appearance. By the appearance of the signal, we will get an information and that information is called indication. Red light. What does that indicate? It indicates that we must stop our vehicle. Then after some time, instead of this red light, green light will burn. That means we can proceed, we can move forward, that is the indication. So green is always indicating that we can proceed. Now there will be yellow lights that we will learn later. In a busy road junction, sometimes at night there will not be much traffic. 
in that case all the lights all the signals will be showing yellow light you might have experienced it here what does that yellow means here yellow means caution you can pass the signals but you must be cautious you must be careful so yellow means caution so now you know these three lights normally used in signals red means stop yellow means caution green means proceed it is the same thing almost the same thing in railways now we will come to railways so you might have seen in the railway station and also on its uh, track on the path of the uh, track you might have seen so many signals erected in the post so in a signal post if there is a provision for red light then we will say it is a stop signal signal is fixed at a place so we will say it is a fixed stop signal so a signal in which there is a provision for red light that is to stop the train then we will say it is a fixed stop signal anyhow if there is a red light that will be always at the bottom suppose it is burning red then that means the aspect of the signal is giving an indication that the train must stop suppose it is the it is green burning red not burning but green burning that means the train can proceed with normal speed so if there is yellow that means driver should move that is loco pilot should move cautiously carefully so a stop signal it will be showing red light when it is not worked or when it is not operated when it is left it as such it will be showing red light here when the signal is showing red means it is the most restrictive aspect of that signal most restrictive aspect means normally there will be three aspects one train should stop then the yellow train can move cautiously then green train can move with the normal speed so here which is the most restrictive restricting the movement of the train it is red so in a stop signal the most restrictive light is red and that position is called on position of the signal so in a stop signal at on position red light will be burning and it is the most restrictive aspect of that stop signal now there may be certain signals which will be having no red light but only yellow and green so yellow means move at a cautious speed green means train can move with a normal speed here yellow light is the most restrictive such a signal is when it is set on that is when it is not disturbed when it is left as such it will be showing one yellow light so that is the most restrictive aspect of that signal in this type of signals it is not required to for the loco pilot to stop his train because yellow he can go with restrictive speed cautious speed and green then it can go normal speed so there is no question of stopping this train at this signal such a signals we are calling as permissive signals so in a post if there is red that means it is a stop signal fixed stop signal then if there is no red but only yellow and green then yellow it can pass restrictive speed green it can pass with the normal speed then it is called a permissive signal because it is not stopping the train now we learned about two types of fixed signals that is one stop signal and the other permissive signal now let us have much more clarity on multiple aspect signaling see in the yester years railways were having only two aspect signaling that is there will be only red and green stop and proceed that's all later 
yellow was introduced yellow light was introduced to give caution aspect so the signaling system used to have three aspects that is red yellow and green later on two yellow were introduced now the signals are having more than two aspects so we are calling it multiple aspect signaling multiple aspect color light signaling every stop signal in multiple aspect signaling will be pre warned that is whenever loco pilot passes a stop signal he will be getting some information about the stop signal in advance so that is another speciality of this multiple aspect color light signaling okay now we have got some idea preliminary idea about the system about the railway system in which we are going to start a train this video itself has become very lengthy i think uh, uh, we can stop it here and in the next video we will see how a train is start from the station what are the requirements and all other things we will see in our next video okay